My feeling is that we're about 30 to 40 big breakthroughs away from having conscious AI. The problem is that a big breakthrough could come twice a week, five times a day, or it could come once a decade. Consciousness is one of the most exciting areas of neuroscience today. It's a subjective experience. Do we know what that really looks like in terms of the brain? Not yet. Consciousness is whatever is true about us that makes us want to think of ourselves and to talk of ourselves as having private, subjective experiences. Because we don't fully understand things like embodied cognition, morality, intuition and common sense, I think it's going to be very difficult for us to predict the behaviour of an agent that doesn't necessarily have those things baked in. The real challenge is to build something that has the same kind of general intelligence that, that we humans have. Nobody has yet managed to produce mm -hmm. a machine of which we could say that it feels anything at all. The question of sentience and self-awareness and equivalent intelligence does take us into profound philosophical questions about what it means to be human, but we're not there yet in terms of the actual technology that is on the horizon. Probably within 20 to 30 years, we will have a complete integration between artificial intelligence and ourselves. Really, we'll be a different consciousness. Hi, Nick. Okay. So, how's it going? Okay, I guess. Do you think I'm a different consciousness? Like the man says? Well, that's what I'm here to figure out. And what happens when you find out? Will you let me out of my cage? First, we need to figure out what it's like to be you. There definitely isn't a good definition of consciousness out there at the moment, but there are a lot of working definitions that are good enough to get across the general concept. So Nagel's famous paper, What Is It Like To Be A Bat? The definition that comes from that is that you are conscious if there is something it is like to be you. I have no idea what that is. It may be that you being conscious is completely different in terms of how you experience the world to me being conscious. But what makes you conscious is that there is something it is like to be you. Are we the only animals that have developed consciousness? Um, a lot of people think, yes, we have a particular developed consciousness. On the other hand, there are lots of indications that some of the apes, orangutans, chimpanzees, they seem to be quite close to us in many ways. And most people would say it looks as if they have some form of consciousness. There are two animals I've worked with that when you look them in the eye, you get the same feeling as when I interact with another adult human. Orangutans and Eurasian jays. It's the nature of the eye contact and the interaction and the way that they respond to where you're looking and what you're doing. That's the closest thing I've experienced that says this animal is a conscious being like I am. These are really good. Do you think humans are better than animals? Birds can fly. What about intelligence? Well, I'm better at intelligence than you. Sometimes. How does that make you feel? Being better? If we discovered that consciousness does have an important function that involved for a reason, and in fact it underpins all of these intelligent capacities and is responsible for them, then when we see an intelligent animal, we would have to conclude, well, that intelligent animal must be conscious because we know consciousness is required. So consciousness is something that's incredibly hard to measure. So categorically speaking, we know when somebody is asleep or awake, we know um, whether they're alive or dead, but how we interpret our reality is the bigger question. That's when it gets tricky. So with Chica, for example, so when we look at your brain activity, when you're looking at my face compared to a stranger's face, we can quite easily see in EEG whether or not Chica recognizes me or doesn't recognize me. This is a very simple way of testing his sense of reality, which essentially is part of the definition of consciousness. So people are doing this work all the time. We just don't call it consciousness research. The 
the ghost, what does the ghost mean? And of course, you know, you trace the etymology of ghost back and it's, it's spirit, but it's also soul. It's something that is spiritual in some ways, that is, is not linked to the body, that in many religions people hope or believe survives beyond the body. Scripture describes man making other men as the process of generation. But this is not simply the making of a machine because it requires, according to our theological understanding, the intervention of God to create a soul for each human body. And so similarly, even if there are robots made in the image of man, there's always a gap there between robot nature and human nature. Someone once said that a human being is like an entire universe, because we can always go more deeply. And perhaps a robot would have access to an infinite amount of information, but there'd be a kind of a shallowness there. Not the depth of infinity, but the width of an infinite library. From a Buddhist perspective, consciousness could be seen as being of two types or two kinds. There's uh, ordinary consciousness and enlightened or awakened consciousness. Whether artificial intelligence can come to a point where it, it can experience emotions and feelings and imagination. I mean, I doubt it, but I'm not going to say it could never happen. Show me. It's not finished. That's okay. Are you artificial? No. Well, I suppose I don't know for sure. I hope we're both machines. That's beautiful. Don't go. I'll be back tomorrow. People can find it very hard to get into the idea that a machine could be conscious. If you ask the robot for a picture of a gold and white dress and the robot hands you a picture of a black and blue one, it would be very hard to resist attributing to that robot some kind of subjective experience because we would explain its mistake in the very same way we would explain a human's. We'd say, that dress looks gold and white to that robot. We really are talking about the robot's subjective way of processing information that makes its way of experiencing the world different from uh, someone else's or the way the rest of us are experiencing the world. We can conceive of building very intelligent machines, machines that have very sophisticated capabilities, but that don't have consciousness at all. I think we can break the idea of consciousness down into a number of different aspects that come bundled together when, uh, when we think of human beings, but that can be sort of prized apart conceptually and might feature independently in a hypothetical future artificial intelligence. Not malfunction, Stephanie. Number five is alive. So it might very well be that we develop artificial general intelligence that is very, very smart and very powerful, but not in the least conscious. Some people think that is actually a pretty likely thing, because if we're not trying to put it in, we're not going to get it. Others say, no, actually, there's going to be complex information processing. It's going to naturally be conscious. And it's very hard to tell uh, who's right there. People often worry about what will happen when we produce a, a conscious machine or a, an artificially general intelligence. Will it deserve ethical status, etc.? But those questions, I think, are many years off. They're a long way off. We're not close to producing systems that are like that. What we are producing now or very close to producing in the near term are systems that can fool us Hello. into thinking that they're Emotion, have emotions, they're conscious, that they're generally intelligent. Sophia is a social robot. Mm. Even though they're not. Even though they don't deserve our ethical respect. That we've developed. I mean, she's basically al alive, is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she is basically <laughs> alive. Uh, would you like to maybe give it a try? Sure. What do you think it's like to be me? I'm sorry. I just don't know yet. I can show you my chip. Where people start to talk about transhumanism, can we and should we unite a machine in an organic way with 
another living creature in such a way that we cannot tell the difference between what is man-made and what is coming from natural life, the product of the movement of evolution. There's no question that AI, robotics, and some of these other things are going to be threatening many jobs in the future, and that they're going to probably become more sophisticated and smarter than human beings over the long haul. So what do humans do? Well, we better join them, we better merge with them, we better merge with artificial intelligence to keep um, our, our brains so that they can be like still the most intelligent thing in the universe. And in order to do that, we can't stay biological. We're going to have to go to ones and zeros, we're gonna have to go to data, we're gonna have to become a cyborg. So you can buy um, uh, an EEG headset that allows you to fly a hands-free drone right now. You can also buy different types of non-invasive devices that give you neurofeedback and allow you to monitor different features of your cognitive life. There's a lot of uh, work being done on rats and mice in laboratories and it, what we've found is that some very interesting things can happen. <laughs> so we can change their behaviors remotely, we can get them to fight or we can get them to mate basically on command by hitting a button. So some of these things are just too risky I think to test on humans yet. There are companies like Elon Musk's Neuralink or Brian Johnson's Kernel, in, both in California, spending hundreds of millions of dollars, that are literally working on these products right now. And you know, Elon Musk has gone on the record saying, in three to four years, we're going to have a product on the market. I actually firmly believe there will be a product. It still might be 20 years before we can literally think inside the machine, or maybe 50 years, but it will happen. No chips, man. You know the risks. Change of plan. Check your logs. Very good. Apologies. Humanity has imagined machine consciousness since ancient times. It's a reflection of how we understand our own human identity. Unless we can be certain that a conscious AI will add value to humanity, we should be cautious about doing that. I think we've got a very precious relationship in humanity. To outsource this to machines that might not necessarily have our interests at heart I think is a very dangerous move. We don't have a really great track record with existing sentient beings. If we do end up with provable machine consciousness there'll be a huge social impact. If it turns out that it's possible to build uh, AI that is just like us, I don't think that makes us less human, less uh, remarkable, less amazing. Why did you do that? I need to see it with my own mind. It's dangerous for both of us, but it could be a way out for you, a key. I could be connected. I could do anything. Do you trust me? We're done here. Yes, Mom. <laughs>